my new house magazine. Look at this door. It's so cute and old fashioned. I did see this magazine. I saw this really cool house. Check it out. Oh, let me see. Ooh. It's so big and has really cool windows upstairs. I like that. But there's a better house on the next page. Check this out. This one I really like. Look at the cute little red door. Eh, I don't really like that house. But I saw something else really cool. It's a really cool bedroom. Oh. Look, the bedroom's all white. Nice. And the bedspread looks so soft and fluffy like you'd be sleeping on a cloud. It does look nice. But wait, there's something on the, in, the, in the beginning. And it's got the most colorful stairs I have ever seen. Are Ooh. these so cute? Yeah, they are. What a house. I'd love to have those in my house. Hey, they're here. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Chris and I were just talking about houses. My favorite was the house with a little red door. And my favorite was the big house with the cool circular windows. So what about you? If you could build your own house, what would it look like? Would it look like this? Or this? Or this? Or this? Or this? Or maybe even this? Well, in today's lesson, we'll hear about a very special house. A house that King Solomon built for God. We'll see how God's presence filled this house during Solomon's day. And we'll learn how God's presence fills the hearts of his children today. Join us! Last week we learned about Solomon, the son of King David. Solomon became a great king himself and he ruled with the wisdom God gave him. Solomon ruled God's people wisely for many years, and God gave Solomon peace throughout the land. And because Solomon didn't have to go to battle, he now had the time to take on a special project. He would build a house for God called the temple. It wasn't a house with a flat screen TV or a built-in pool in the back. It was much better. It was an amazing, amazing house. It was a very special place where God's presence would dwell and where his people could come to worship him. Solomon's father, King David, had prepared for this day. This day when his son Solomon, a man of peace, would build the temple for the one true God. In King David's time, the Ark of the Covenant, which was a great golden chest that held the Ten Commandments and represented God's presence among the Israelites, had been held captive by the Philistines. King David gathered all his soldiers and all the people of Israel to rescue the Ark of the Covenant from enemy hands. As they returned to Jerusalem, the great crowd of people danced with joy and sang songs of praise to God. Years after bringing the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem, God gave King David peace from all his enemies. In awe of all the Lord had done for him, King David decided to build the Lord a temple. But because King David had been a man of war, God came to the prophet Nathan and told him that King David would not be the one to build this amazing temple. Instead, God said that King David's son Solomon would build him a temple and that God would set up an eternal dynasty through the lineage of King David. As King David came to the end of his life, he made preparations for Solomon to build the temple. King David had great ships bring logs of cedar wood from foreign lands, and he had tons of stone carved from distant mountains brought to Jerusalem. He ordered iron and more bronze than could be weighed to make nails and other fittings for the great temple. King David gathered the leaders of Israel together and told them to support Solomon so he would be successful in this great task.
For more than seven years, Solomon embarked upon the great work of building the temple. When it was finished, it stood four stories tall and nine feet long. The interior of the building was completely covered in cedar wood, decorated with beautiful carvings of fruit and open flowers. The walls of the inner sanctuary, the room where the Ark of the Covenant was housed, were covered in pure gold. Not a single surface of the temple was without decoration. It was a magnificent sight. When the temple was finished, Solomon completed his father's vision and had the Ark of the Covenant brought into the temple. As Solomon and the elders of Israel watched, a procession of priests carried the Ark into the temple. Once it had been placed upon the altar in the inner sanctuary, a great cloud appeared as the glory of the Lord filled the temple. The cloud was so thick, the priests could not perform their work. The entire assembly of Israel had gathered for the occasion. After seeing the glory of the Lord fill the temple, Solomon prayed to God, praising His glory and faithfulness. Solomon prayed that God's people would live according to God's word and purposes. Once Solomon had finished praying and blessing all those in attendance, the people celebrated the incredible feat that had been accomplished. The temple had been built, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Once the temple construction was completed, the Lord appeared to Solomon. The Lord said, I have made this temple you built holy by putting my name on it forever. God told Solomon that if he followed him faithfully, as his father David had, his royal line would have no end. God challenged Solomon, as he instructs us all, to follow him faithfully. So Solomon built a place for God, the temple, following the plans that God had given to Solomon's father, King David. It took a long time, many workers, and valuable resources to complete this project, but it was worth it. It was an amazing, beautiful place. The Ark of the Covenant was placed there. This was the golden chest containing the Ten Commandments, where God was very present. And when the ark was placed there, God's presence filled the entire temple. And God promised to be with his people as long as they continued to obey him. During Solomon's day, the presence of God was mainly in the temple, although we know that God is everywhere present. But thanks to Jesus, God's presence is no longer confined to a temple. His presence is now available to us through the Holy Spirit, who dwells within believers. We now have access to God's presence at any time since He dwells within us. It is in God's presence that we find hope, joy, love, and peace. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? So we are like the temple. God's presence is in us and with us. As we go about each day, let's take time to think about God and remember the truth that he dwells within us. Let's pray together. God, we thank you that your word is true. We thank you, God, that for those of us who believe in your son, Jesus, that we have your presence with us. You are right here with us, and we are never, ever alone. And for those who have not yet accepted Jesus as their Savior, we know that they can do that today. We know that they can ask Jesus into their heart at any time on any day. And we know, God, that you will then come and abide with them. We thank you for these truths, and I pray that everyone listening would come to know you. In Jesus' name we pray. Solomon was faithful to build God's house, the temple, where God's powerful presence dwelled. But today, God's presence isn't in the temple. 
It dwells in the hearts of believers instead. Join us next week as we hear more about King Solomon.